Hello everyone, welcome back again. My name is Jesse and in this one up tutorial, we are putting a very simple app called Displacify. So we're trying to re render or display name entities in Flux. So let's see what I mean. So we're using spaces name entity recognition. So in case I paste in a test here and I click on submit. So it's going to analyze this test and then get all the name entities within this particular test and then display it for us in a very nice format. So this is the original test and this is the result of my analysis right so i have all the entities so apostle paul was a person and then you see that all of these things are there right including some that are dates mid 50s date location se several other stuff right so, so we're trying to see how to build this within this particular tutorial so if i go back to the refresh i can enter in something very simple and basic so let's try it again with something simple so let's go that's matthew honeyball Honeyball and Ennis are the founders of this place, right? Of let's say explosion. Not AI company. Right. So if I go with this and I submit, it's going to analyze the test and give us the right result. Right. So perfect. So uh, Matthew, Matthew Honeyball is a person. Ennis is an organization, <laughs> and then explosion is an event. Wow. So that is something basic, right? based on the data, data that we have. So let's try and see how to build this particular app here. So I just come back and then we set up everything. So we start here, I'll position everything well. So I come back to my terminal, then inside here, we have nothing, right? So here I'm just going to create my first file. So touch dot app dot pi, and then I'll create another folder. So I create the arrow templates, templates, right? Perfect. So to work with flags, you just have all have to install flags so pip install that is in case you don't have flags on the system pip install flags then the next thing you need is flags markdown to help us to do our rendering then you also need to install space so these are the main requirements to work with this particular app so let's start building so we're just going to open sublime the current folder then you start just open it perfectly here so we have everything working as expected so let me position it so i'll close off this right we'll be closing on this but before we close on this what we're doing so i'll just go to the app.py file and then here i'm just going to import flux so from flux import flux capital fl esk then we also need to import render template to render our template render template then the next thing we need is we also need to use url4 and then request right these are the main stuff that we need in building an app very interesting and very simple okay so let's initialize our app so let's call it init app there's going to be app then flux then i'm going to pass in my agenda underscore name then i'm going to close my app with if main set the app dot run to debug right, so let's go that's debug it's called to true right perfect so that's a basic idea about the app so whatever we're doing will be in between this particular place so let's create our first route it's going to be an app flask uses the creator so we'll be using app dot route then i'll pass in the route which is the in default so def function called index then doesn't take any argument so return render template then I have to create this index.html file. So let's go and create our index.html file here, right? So open it and create that file. So inside my templates, I will call it as index.html. Then I'll create another file for our results, which is going to be the same thing, results.html. Perfect. So that is the basic stuff that we need, right? So let's create a boilerplate stuff here. So HTML. Then let's go to this place C5. Right? For the app. And then just create a simple div. So div h2 displaying. Displaying. <laughs> displaying any R in flux. Right? Something very basic. So that is what we have done for the index. We can also do the same thing for the result, right? These are the common for all of them. Perfect. So let's see how to work with it. So 
I'll come back here and then run Python 3. Then app. I'm using Python 3 to run my app, right? So if I go with Python 3, app.py, it's going to open a particular port and then I'm going to see the result of our app. So whilst it's doing that, let's come back here and do some other stuff. See that we forgot to do import. <laughs> supposed to be import right perfect so that it doesn't give us any error so give us an error here so let's run it again and now it's not going to give us any error so everything is working so from flux import flux render templates and then url4 and then we will be initializing our app then we build our first route right perfect. so let's build our second route so i'll copy this one and then build our second route for our result so this is going to be for our result so let's call it as extract extract it's going to be the name of that result of that particular route so let's call it extract what we're using to analyze or do our name entity perfect so everything is working well so the slider is opening the port so it's running on this particular port so i'll copy this port and then i'll place it inside my here so we close this one and then open from here so that's going to show us the result displaying any are in flux which is the same test that we had here, right? The same test we had inside our index. So perfect. So let's add a form here. It's going to be form to receive our test, right? So the form is going to be something very basic. But before, let me put inside a div. So div, then form. So the form takes an input. Let's use test area. Test area. Right, and then this status this here, I'm going to set the row to let's say five and then the column to let's say five, right? Then the most important thing for the test area is the name, which I will set it as say row test, right? You can just call it as any name. Perfect. Then we need to set a button. So this is going to be our first button, this is going to be our submit button. And then I'll go with the type submit. That's going to be our first button. Then we also need to create a button to clear our test, right? So I'll place our test on top of it, which is going to be our reset button. Reset. Something very simple, something very basic. Then I'll go with clear. Perfect. So let's save this one now. And then if we refresh it, see that it's giving us our stuff. It's not that nice, but we add a bit of creation later. So in case I type in a test here, hello. And I clear on the clear, I'm going to clear it. Perfect. Everything is working. So how do we send this test to our backend? So to do that, you just have to set a method. So the method is going to be post, and then the action is going to be the route that you are doing, which is the extract route, right? So this extract route you can use URL for also. So you come back to the extract route here, and then work on it. So in that case, I have to set the method. So let's go as method. Right, methods is equal to we using get and then post also right then i'll receive our test from here so if our request dot method is equal to post then i want to do something what do i want to do i want you to receive that particular test that you are sending right so the test that the person is sending i want you to store inside something called raw test then you're just going to use request dot form because this is a form right this is a form then we're going to take that particular test which is raw test so this raw test is coming from this name here perfect so whatever the person types here will be attached to this name sent via post to this route which is the route at the back end here then we are going to render this particular stuff at the front end right or inside our result right you can just put inside our result that's the basic idea behind what you have brought here so far so instead of using this one as index let's go with results right perfect and i'll pass in my raw test here so raw test go to raw test perfect something very basic so if i come back to the result here i can just go with div now let's go to our original test h2 original test which will be using ginger to call it as raw test right 
and the very basic to destroy. So if I save it and I let's try it and see, I'll save this one, save this one, and let's run it and see. Refresh. Hope everything is working as expected. Now let's type in a test. So hello display C and then let's click on submit method not allowed. So let's try and see the error that you are having. Mm, let's refresh it again, right? To come back because sometimes now I don't know whether you have noticed there's an issue with flags sometimes when you're trying to load. So I'll resubmit again. Perfect. So the test has come. Very interesting, right? So that is the basic idea so the test that we entered here has come so let's uh, change the test let's change the test to let's say something spacey is cool right if i click on submit that spacey school has come perfect so everything our app is working perfectly we know how to receive test we know how to render the test now let's see how to add the displacy aspect to it right the spacey aspect to it so i'm just going to come to the top of my file and from here i'm going to import the necessary packages so the thing that we need is we need to import spacing so it's going to be import so let's go to our nlp app nlp packages it's going to be import spacey which will be using to do our named entity recognition then from spacey Import this place, right? Perfect. Then I'm going to initialize my NLP object and call it spacey dot load en. The en is the English model, right? Perfect. So that is for the NLP stuff. Now to be able to work on the displaying of that, let's try it and work on it and see the results you're going to get before we move on. I'm just going to come back here. Then let's go to docs. And I'll pass in my NLP object and I'll pass in my raw test. Right, perfect. So let's create an HTML display. So let's go display display C dot render. Then we will be rendering entities, right? So docs, then style, go to ENT. Right, perfect. So let's send this our result to our front end, right? I'll save this one and then let's send it to our front end. So if I send it to the front end, go to HTML, go to HTML. So let's give it a different name. So instead of HTML, let's go to as results. So let's go to HTML so that it doesn't conflict with the already known tent because it's a reserved word. So let's go to results. Let's go to results. So let's save this one and then let's come back to our result option here. So we have our original test. Let's come back to here and then let's go with our results, right? So this is going to go with result. So let's save it. Every, let's save everything. Let's run our app. So I'll come back here. Refresh. And let's see whether it's going to work. So let's see what we have done. So I'm just going to go to this place and then we type in something here, right? So let's type in a test. We have to make this one beautiful. So the test is going to be, let's say, hello, oh, James. Right, I am Jessica and I work in, let's say, in London, right? Something like this. So these are all ways that we're going to have entities. So if I click on submit, to analyze it and then it's going to give us the result so this is the result given to us but we don't want this particular result we don't want this result because this is how it's rendering it right so these are the result it's given to us but it's an html so how do we make it see and then convert or render this particular html into the raw test right that is the basic idea so how do we do that so we're just going to come back to our file here then from here we'll be using flux max down to help us so it's going to be very simple you can use markdown you can use flux markdown you can use flux mikasi but let's use markdown so from flux est dot markdown like it's a flux flux extension import markdown markdown right then you pass markdown markdown you pass markdown around our 
Uh, so we're going to wrap it around app. So we're going to markdown. Then our app. That is all that you need. So this is going to enable us to be able to render our markdown, this test here. Well, right. Instead of it being rendered like this, which you don't benefit, which is not nice for the user, you'll be using this particular markdown option to help us render every test as markdown in a specific format using a filter. So that is the basic idea. Now we can just come back to this place. And from here, now, if I save it and I come back to this particular location, right, the result location, I'm going to pass in a filter. Let's go to the first or the simplest method, just go with the pipe, which is a filter, then mark down, right? So if I save it and let's run everything again, so I come back to here, then we're going to use the same thing that we had, we're going to analyze it, right? So let's save this, save this, and then save it. You don't need to modify anything, just wrap in flux extension markdown around our app and then using this particular filter will enable you to render our display in a very nice format so i run it so when i click on the submit right now it's going to render it effectively very very nice so it's going to change it from the previous one to a very nice format so that is the basic idea so that is how to display or render maybe markdown not only just display but markdown and any other stuff in flux very very simple so the most important thing you need is you need to install this particular package right flux extension dot markdown import markdown you wrap it around your app then you are going to just come back to the result your html then use this particular filter that is the first method right there's also another option of using this option which is going to be the other this one right using a normal filter then markdown is another option of doing way of doing it then you pass in Close it with end markdown or end filter rather <laughs> to the end markdown. Perfect. Then inside you you can pass in your markdown, whatever markdown you want to pass in. So this is cool, right? That is something very basic. So you can use this particular option or use the other option. So any of them is going to work, right? But I prefer this one because it's quite neat. So these are the two ways you can use to render your ma or markdown in general in Flux. Right, but this is for displacing how to render displacing. So let's close this. Let's add some beautification to this because it is not that nice. So there's a, the other way of doing it that we have it like this. You can also use a HTML wrapper to wrap around it. So in that case, it's going to be something like this. I'm just going to create a simple HTML wrapper. So HTML wrapper. So this you can just put it. Let me paste it there, right? So this is something very simple. To just add beautification to it right so just using a simple division right a simple style to make it quite interesting to add some border line to it then you're going to pass in a test here right that's the basic idea then when you come back to here you can just go with html then html html dot replace you're going to replace all the spaces between them using this particular format of say, backslash n for Backslash and that is for the new line. Then you are going to just replace all the double new lines with a single new line, right? Perfect. That's something very basic. Then when you come back to this place, we just use HTML wrapper, so HTML wrapper dot format. I pass in my HTML, right? Something very basic. So that is something very basic. Now let's add some beautification to the front end and then to the back end. So I'll copy the code and paste there because it's just not part of the main idea right so i've copied and pasted the various codes there right which is not part of this is just atm or stuff the code be below so i can also check and then let's refresh it and see perfect and now everything is working as expected right very very interesting so in case i paste in a test here so let's paste in so let's see uh, john james lives in uk right United Kingdom, so United Kingdom. And I click on submit, and it's going to analyze it and then give us the entities in a very nice format, right? Perfect. So that now this is in a very nice format for us. That's the basic idea behind it. So in case you have not subscribed to this channel, you can also subscribe and then check the links below for some interesting materials and some interesting courses to enable you to master Python and then machine learning. Thank you, and then see you in the next session. Stay blessed.